Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains and to the last video in my part of the algorithms course at the University of Cambridge. Since this is my last video in this series, I'm not going to introduce any new technical topics today. Instead, I'm going to share with you three secrets on how to do well in your exams, whether in this particular course or in any other university course you might do. One day I'm probably going to do a video on what the real point of university exams is, at least according to me. But for now, if you're just content with earning good marks in the exam, then please pay attention to this advice. So, when you write your own programs, you will experience something similar. <laughs> and uh, I hope you stick with it long enough to get the thrill of actually getting to the end. So I know that many of you are preoccupied with doing well in the exams. And since this is my last lecture with you in this course, uh, I want to give you three secrets that will help you do well in this course and in every other course. So the first thing is what to do with uh, preparation of exam questions. You are given a copious library of past exam questions that you can use for trying out um, a dry run of what will happen to you in the exam. Unfortunately, you are also given solutions. This is really bad because uh, it might lead you to actually look at the solutions. If you do that, you will never be able to learn how to solve the problem. So you must make it a religiously followed rule that you are going to do the problems without looking at the solutions. So you do the problem, you take the exam question, you switch off your computer, you have a piece of paper, uh, you switch off telephone, uh, no distractions, you have an egg timer set to 30 minutes, and in the 30 minutes, like your life depends on it, you answer the question as best as you can. And after that, you stop, even if you are halfway through, and you say, hmm, am I happy with this or not? And if you're not happy, and if you didn't really crack the problem, and you don't need to look at the solution to know if you answered it or not, you know if you answered it or not, uh, then leave it. Uh, and certainly don't go and look at the solution at that point. Don't go and look at the solution. Instead, uh, what you might want to do is uh, set the problem aside, but study the notes that you're taking during the course. Uh, heaven forbid, study the textbook. Uh, and then try again after a day. So the next day, or after two days, again, in the same circumstance, you lock yourself in a room for half an hour without books, without uh, internet, and you just answer as best as you can. Usually, the fact that you have left your brain with something in the background to think about it, will make a big difference. And the second time you try it, you will have an insight you didn't have the first time. Of course, you can't do that at the exam, but this will be a good preparation for uh, getting the type of, um, of clues that will be helpful at exam time. If, as soon as you've tried, you go and look at the solution, it will look like you understand it, but it will never allow you to be able to solve another problem at the same time of your own. This is advice that I received from my master when I was in the first, uh, first undergraduate year like you, uh, and has served me well throughout my academic career, and I'm passing it on uh, to you, uh, and I passed it on to generations of other students who've made good use of it, and one day some of you will become full professors on their own. They will phone me up and say, oh, look, you remember me? Uh, now I'm a full professor. And I'm also passing on this advice to my students, and it's working well for them. So please do that. Don't look at the solutions until after, uh, well after you have given the problem your best shot. The second secret I'm going to give you is don't plan on catching up later. Always do things at the time they happen. Aim to understand the lecture during the lecture. Not later when you go back home and you revise. Not later after the end of term when you have more time to read stuff. It will never happen anyway. 
you have to understand things as they happen. You have to come to the course prepared that, so that the light bulb goes on before the end of the course, because that's when you get the most out of this. You are the privileged ones. I mean, if you look at how many people there were on the first day, about twice as many as there are today. So you're the better half of the people taking this course, because you're still here uh, on the 12th lecture. Now, if you use this lecture just to collect the notes, like the other half did, then uh, you're missing the point of being offered these lectures. You might as well just uh, be somewhere else in the world without paying the fees that you are paying to be in Cambridge and just collect the lecture notes from the website. If you are at the lecture, make use of the lecture. It's an intense, um, an intense experience to be in there and try to understand as these very dense things go on. Uh, at, and at that time, ah, now I finally got it. So um, that will make you understand this material a lot better than if you just think, well, yes, now I know what he talked about. I didn't really understand, but I will have time later in the vacation to understand. It. That never really works. Uh, never really works anywhere near as well as when you understand during the lecture. Some things I understood during the lectures when I was a first year undergraduate, I still remember now. The things I worked out later, I obviously forgot. Um, and the third secret I'm going to give you, I mean, there's, there's many more I could give you, but I only have time to give you three. So, the third secret I'm going to give you is this. If you want to get a good mark in the exam, uh, please be aware that the marker, which could be me for this course, uh, wants to give you good marks. Because I, you know, I work hard to make you understand and own this material. It would be my greatest pleasure to reward you for having understood it. In order to give you the marks, I have to figure out what your answer to the problem is. If it looks like this, I am unlikely to have an easy time understanding what the hell uh, you meant. Uh, it is much easier for me to understand something that's written like this. So please, don't write like shit if you want to get <laughs> a good mark, because I have to mark a pile of scripts. There is 150 of you in the class, uh, and a number of you will do my questions. And I have two questions of this, plus another question in discrete maths. Uh, and I have to return all the scripts marked uh, in about a week's time. So there's a finite and small amount of time I can devote to each script. And if most of my time budget for your script goes into figuring out the words of this shit, then I'm not going to have much time to followed your train of thought. Whereas in this one, there's a direct high bandwidth channel between your brain and my brain, and I can just communicate with, oh, yes, that's what they meant. Oh, that's great, excellent, 20 out of 20. So uh, you will get the last reminder on the day of the exam. This is uh, the written part of the cover page. And notice this part here. Candidates are expected to write fucking legibly. <laughs> Those who do not may find themselves at a grave disadvantage. This is the truth, okay? Secret number three. Right. So, uh, with that said, you are very privileged to be here studying computer science now uh, because you're in an age where for 35 pounds you can buy yourself a computer uh, that's more powerful than the computer sent men to the moon, okay? And that's a privilege that everybody else has, even the ones who are not studying computer science. Uh, cheap computers are available for everyone, but you chose to study this subject means you also have uh, an even a uh, more serious advantage, which is uh, you understand how things work and you can make them do what you want. You, you've acquired, you are acquiring this special power of transforming your ideas into something that can actually be executed and run. This is, is kind of amazing. It's, it's basically like a superpower. So, 
you, you will be able to do things that most people can't do, um, which is tell the machines how to behave, how to implement your thoughts and ideas. And some other people will have grand ideas, and they will ask people like you to make them work, because they can't make them work. You are the few priests who can make the machines do uh, what uh, human beings want. This is actually a, an incredible superpower. And this, um, this superpower is so valuable and it's, it's so exciting, so thrilling to be able to do it. Uh, I, I had prepared more uh, goodies than I have time to show you, but I'll just show you a very small clip. So this is from a, an old documentary from before you were born. Uh, of um, it's called Triumph of the Nerds. Uh. Mainframe computers were far from personal. They sat in big air-conditioned rooms at insurance companies, phone companies, and the bank, and their main function was to get us confused with some other guy named Cringely, who was a deadbeat and had a criminal record. Eventually, computer terminals did begin to appear in some schools, but most of us paid no attention. But there was usually one kid who did pay attention, falling in love with the digital purity of those ones and zeros. He was the nerd. And I took this book home that described the PDP-8 computer, and it just, oh, it was just like um, a Bible to me. I mean, all these things that, for some reason, I'd fallen in love with. Like, you might fall in love with um, a card game called Magic, or you might fall in love with doing crossword puzzles or something else, or playing a musical instrument. I fell in love with these little descriptions of computers on their inside, and it was a little mathematics. I could work out some problems on paper and solve it and see how it's done, and I could come up with my own solutions and feel good in, inside. So you would keyboard these commands in, and then you would wait for a while, and then the thing would go ta 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 and it would tell you something out. But even with that, it was still remarkable especially for a 10-year-old, that you could write a program in BASIC, let's say, or FORTRAN, and actually this machine would sort of take your idea and it would, tr it would sort of execute your idea and give you back some results. And if they were the results that you predicted, your program really worked, it was an incredibly thrilling experience. So. Some of you ask me for things like, oh, can you give me the recordings of the lecture? Can you give me the, the, the copies of the stuff that you write on the blackboard and so on and so on? It would be so much easier, blah, blah. My job is not to make your life easier. I don't care about making your life easier. I care that you learn. I care that you actually get the stuff we are doing and keep it for the rest of your professional life. After you've forgotten most of the stuff, I care that you have a deep ownership of this important, incredible power of being able to um, instruct the machines. And I, all I can do is inspire you to go back and do things on your own. You will only learn these things, not by listening to someone like me here at the front of the lecture theater. You will only learn these things if you do them yourself. Okay? And my job here is just all I'm aiming to do is to make you excited about going back to your computer and doing it. A subset of you will do that. That's the subset of people who will have great success because they will own this superpower of being able to make the computers do what you want. It's a lot harder than, uh, than it sounds, as those of you who've tried have tried to debug the programs and have the, the experience of the Pythagoras Switch movie that it doesn't actually go uh, the way it's supposed to go. But this superpower, you are in a great position to acquire it. And uh, as Spider-Man heard from his uncle, with great power comes great responsibility. So once you have this superpower, please don't uh, use it for uh, making weapons of mass destruction or making oppressive systems that are used to track down dissidents and all that kind of stuff. Use it to create something that makes the world a better place. And if you also become rich, then more power to you. Great. <laughs>
I very much enjoy lecturing this course, and I hope you enjoyed this course as well. If you did, please say so by clicking the like button on this video and on all the other ones in this series that you liked. If you read the numbers, it's obvious that many more people watch the videos silently than say whether they liked it or not. Why is that? If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you hated the video, that's fine. Hit the thumbs down and say why, so that the person who made the video gets to understand his audience a little better. Maybe writing a comment actually requires some effort, but at least clicking on thumbs up or thumbs down requires no effort whatsoever, so you should definitely do it for every video you watch, not just on my channel. If you are one of my Cambridge students, clicking like or dislike is one way at your disposal to send a signal about the kind of quality teaching material that you want more of. If you are a student of computer science from anywhere else, then your thumbs up will encourage me to produce more content and share it on this platform. Either way, your likes will nudge YouTube into showing these videos to more people like you who might also find them interesting and useful. Now, I don't think that many of the people who are watching this video now realize that, but producing useful teaching materials is not just a matter of turning up in front of the camera or in a lecture theatre and speaking off the cuff. I estimate that each hour of lecturing takes about 20 to 50 hours of course preparation, possibly more. Uh, hopefully this can be amortized over several years of giving the same course. I've been giving this course for 15 years and every year I uh, learn from past mistakes and improve the presentation a little bit. Now, on top of the course preparation, in the case of recordings like these ones, you must add another 15 to 20 hours of editing and post-production for each hour of video that comes out of the pipeline. With all that, I dedicate these recordings of my lectures and all the passion and enthusiasm that went into preparing both the lectures themselves and these recordings to Professor Corrado Mencuccini, the most inspiring of several great professors who taught me when I was an electronic and computer engineering undergraduate at the Università La Sapienza di Roma many, many years ago. During those first two unforgettable years of our undergraduate course, Professor Mencuccini didn't just teach us physics. He guided us, he entertained us, he inspired us, and he motivated us. The first two secrets I gave you earlier, well, they came from him. He touched many hearts, and I wish one day to become half as good a teacher as he has been to me. To you who are watching, best wishes to all of you. Enjoy the thrill of being able to make the machine do what you want. More generally, always enjoy what you do, during your studies, during your professional career, and during your whole life, because that's the only way you can be really great at what you do, whatever you do. And I want you to be great. Go for it.